Hello, I'm Thomas Cummins from UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science. We teach an online module called Soil Resources, which several teachers have taken to satisfy the requirements of the Teaching Council for teaching the soil science component of agricultural science and even cert. We've put together some videos here that we hope might be useful. They're from our own soil science teaching and they cover a couple of the topics of the Leaving Cert and Agricultural Science course. Here's the equipment. Two soil sampling steel rings, some beakers, U.S. stand with clamps, water, ordinary tap water is fine, uh, graduated cylinders for measuring volume, some trays for handling soil material, a ruler, a timer, and a bench top balance. We need to know the dimensions of the rings. This one has a diameter of 50 millimeters. And note the dimensions of the other slightly sh smaller diameter there. And the lengths, be careful to see both ends of the ruler. Not there, not there. There. And there. So you need to pause the video for recording measurements. In this case, the weights also of the rings in grams. Here's our field sampling site. A compacted soil on the left and less compacted on the right. You can see vegetation difference. It's very light compaction just from foot traffic. Here's the equipment, a wood block, a hammer and trowel for excavating. The ring is driven into the ground, not all the way, leaving a space at the top for this exercise. And the sample is excavated. Note I expected it to be easier to dig this up. Of course, the soil is compacted here. And scraping off the excess soil, flush with the base of the ring, cleaning off the surface on the outside. So two soil samples ready for taking into the lab. One is compacted. We need to weigh these now and set up the balance to ignore the weight of the foil tray. You can see the balance is very variable because there's a draft in the lab. But we're only measuring to a precision of one gram, so ignoring both decimal places here. So the weight of the fresh weight, field moist weight of sample one is 184 grams. That's the soil and the ring, excluding the tray. And the weight of sample 2, soil plus ring, is 157 grams to the nearest gram. So here's those numbers, and we can get the weight of the soil, the field moist soil, by subtraction. Setting up for hydraulic conductivity measurement involves putting the rings into the clamps over some beakers. We need to know the depth of the soil below the edge of the ring. Really crudely measured here, but that's what you've got. To the nearest millimeter. Setting the water level should be level with the top edge of the ring. And it's quite tricky to do that. We need, of course, here to saturate the soil and get the water flowing steadily through the ring. You can see it coming out the bottom of both rings, but there's very much faster flow rate in ring two. We can already see that. Now, starting with flow test 
Oh, starting flow test one. Getting the ring completely filled with water so the meniscus is bulging above the top edge of the ring. Starting the timer. A couple of seconds to swap the beakers, but we we'll correct for that at the end. And then leaving them run for three minutes. Full three minutes are shown here with some care. I hope maybe more care than this being kept to keep the water topped up to the standard level which is the top edge of the ring in both cases so we let that run now for the three minutes. As the flow is continuing you can see it's necessary to keep more water going into ring 2 to keep the constant head or level of the water surface above the surface of the soil and, and you can also see there's no bubbles escaping because the soil was fully wetted to begin with. A lot more water appearing out of soil 2. Coming to the end of three minutes now, we stop the timer at three minutes and we need a couple of seconds to switch the beakers around which cancels out the error introduced from that at the beginning. So now we can see very roughly speaking the difference in volume from the two soil samples, very much water coming much more water coming out of sample two. We need to measure the volume. Here are two graduated cylinders used for measuring the volume from one is uh, close to the 10 millimeter mark on this smaller graduated cylinder and then in the second sample has given a full 50 milliliters plus this volume that's shown here for number two. So tests two and three proceeding rapidly here. We don't need to sit around watching them all day. And the same process being operated here with the same imprecisions in swapping around the beakers, keeping the water level constant, we could probably do a somewhat better test here by holding these conditions a bit more constant, but doing it three times at least helps to get things right. We could take the mean of the three tests. Number three going ahead now. A very consistent results. You can see the water flow speeded up here is similarly different between the two. So the, con the hydraulic conductivity is constant, fairly constant, even though a lot of water has gone through the soil. It's not changing over time. So that's the third test completed there now, and the volumes 
I recorded here. Finally, the wet soils were left to drain for a couple of hours and weighed again with their ring so you can see those final weights here. We hope you found some of this useful. If you want to get in touch, you can email me thomas.cummins at ucd.ie and look out for UCD School of Agriculture and Food Science on social media.